Hi YouTube, it's Ola Migoke Philip here again. So in this video, I will be talking about REST API and GraphQL, the differences between the both and um, essentially which is uh, the preferred approach or the, be the better one for your application. So this video isn't a coding session. I will be discussing about the REST API, how it compares to GraphQL, what it is and which is best for your project. So if you will be, uh, if you would prefer the coding session, I would just rather you subscribe and you now click on the notifi notification bell because the video that I'll be releasing after this is uh, a more practical approach. This is merely a discussion or like a uh, more like a, a preview of what that is going to be like when um, I when I once I drop the video. So let's dive in. So before I go on to drawing up comparison between these two approaches to API, let's examine these um, APIs individually. So what exactly is a RESTful API and what is GraphQL all about? Like, because a lot of us has been hearing, you know, REST APIs, GraphQL, we don't exactly know what these things are. I mean, what are these people saying about, especially GraphQL lately, you know, it has been, you know, generating a lot of, um, should I say, media attention amidst um, developers so what is what is it about so just to clear terms before we move on to the next um let's define what an api is first so an api what is an api an api an application program interface is a block of code that allows two software programs to communicate with each other. So um, this is usually between a client device like like a browser if you're using one right now or an install to happen on your mobile phone if you're using one, your PC, you know, like communication between this device and a server. An API provides an interface for these two to communicate. So an API defines the the correct way or a more like a clearer path for a developer to request service from an operating system or a resource and in turn data from this server like data from this server is returned you know within different contexts and you know across multiple channels so to explain this further um, this API um, to explain it further I will be using uh, the popular restaurant analogy so imagine yourself in a restaurant your favorite restaurant sitting in your favorite corner and you know the menu is right there on the table and you're going through the menu that the restaurant has and you see the one that you prefer and you signal to the waiter you know who is just around there in the you know restaurant and you tell the waiter this is what i want and this is how i want it so the waiter says okay sir okay ma'am and takes your request to the kitchen so the kitchen in this case is the server the database um, from which um whatever data you're requesting will be um brought from so the waiter gets your requests um, communicated to the kitchen and brings back a feedback, a response. So the response in this um, context is your order. So yourself, you're the customer, you are the client here. The kitchen is the server and the waiter is the interface wherein you're passing a request and what brings back the response to you. So what is a REST API? One of the most 
popular types of API is REST, also known as RESTful APIs. You know, some might find it confusing, REST and RESTful API. Both are actually the same. So REST API were designed to take advantage of existing protocols such as the HTTP on the web. So using this HTTP request methods to get, put, post, and delete data. A RESTful API is based on a representation and state transfer technology. That is where the name you know, REST comes from. A software architectural style that defines a set of constraints to be used for creating web services. You know, that might sound like, you know, a lot of, you know, big thing. Like, I know it it's can be boring. Uh, so, so, I wouldn't, you know, disturb you with, you know, overtly technical definition of you know what this means i will break it down in, into simple terms so what this essentially means is that a rest or restful api provides um, sort of interoperability between a client and the server so allowing the client which we've defined using the you can still remember that yeah so <laughs> using the client like allowing the client rather to make a request to, to a resource uri and in turn, a response with a payload formatted in HTML, XML, JSON, or YML, or any format, depending on what the client requests or you know what is available on the menu. So, a RESTful API explicitly takes advantage of HTTP methodologies using the GET to retrieve a re to retrieve a resource, put to exchange the state of or update a resource, which can be an object, a file, statement, or blocks of statements, or block of statements. So post to create that resource and delete to remove it. RESTful APIs are stateless, meaning that calls can be made independently of one another. Each call contains all the necessary data to complete itself successfully. The networked components are the resources available by the client on request. Because the REST calls are stateless, it makes it really useful in cloud applications, which we will be diving into you know the practical aspect of this in the next video stateless components can be freely redeployed if something fails and they can scale to accommodate load changes this is because any request can be directed to any instance of a component there can be nothing saved there is nothing saved really like except if you are putting to use um caching okay which we will be discussing as well in the next video so because this is merely a discussion that is just why i brought that up so nothing is saved and it doesn't have to remember in the next transaction or request that you are making so that makes you know restful api really popular for web users and over the years it has actually been you know the preferred way so moving on you know rest and GraphQL, like one of the most popular questions, you know, like I get to hear from people when I talk about GraphQL is which is better for my application? And, you know, I've been hearing about REST, I've been hearing about GraphQL, which approach is better? By the end of this video, you will be able to tell which of these approaches is best for your application. REST and GraphQL are both leveraging the HTTP methodology to send data. REST in the last years has gained a very high adoption rate and is seen as the preferred for a long time as, and as well as the traditional way of doing so with, by means of sending data over HTTP. 
So GraphQL is often presented as a new way to think about building and consuming APIs. The GraphQL was introduced by Facebook and it was developed to cope with the need for more flexibility and you know efficiency, solving some shortcomings that developers experienced while interacting with REST APIs. We're gonna talk about that, those shortcomings like soon. Although that doesn't mean that GraphQL doesn't have its own shortcomings as well. GraphQL takes on a different approach to the REST API design architecture, one which is much flexible. The main and most important difference is that GraphQL is not dealing with dedicated resources. Instead, everything is regarded as a graph and therefore connected. What this means is that GraphQL is not dealing directly with um, a unique endpoint that has a fixed data set or like a, fi a fixed data structure that, it, that is meant to be returned uh, as a response. Means that the, the, the query is dynamic and the responses is, is as well dynamic. These allow us to tailor our request to the exact needs per time via one endpoint using the GraphQL query language. This allows for combination of different entities in one query, yet providing on every level as to which or how attributes should be included in the response. Example of this um, API approach. So we will be considering data fetching in REST and GraphQL. So in this video, in order to slim it down, uh, as I said earlier, it is, it is not a coding session. So my examples are sourced from, you know, web pages online. So in this particular video, my example is coming from howtographql.com. You can check out the link. So uh, this example, I will, will be considering like a blog application wherein we have users who are posting content. We have um, the post itself that has title and a body as well as followers and comments and all these things. So data fetching with REST and GraphQL. With a REST API, you would typically, you know, gather the data by accessing multiple endpoints by having a certain endpoint to get users or to get users ID, um, a different endpoint to access the, the post that a particular user um, uh, has by supplying the ID of the user, you know, and you will usually have a different endpoint as well to get the followers that this user has. So this uh, example right in front of us shows us like how a typical REST API functions, wherein there is a specific endpoint to every scenario. However, in GraphQL, you simply send a single query to the GraphQL server. You send it to the server. That includes the data requirements. Then the server responds with a JSON object, the payload. So, and this um, query that we are seeing right here, we can see that it's more like it's represent it's represented clearly, like the user is specified with a name, and we are requesting that this we are requesting that the post made by this user should be returned, but not the post and its body. Return only the post with the title as well as the followers of this user, not all the details of the followers, not the um, followers ID, but the followers name. So in the response, you can see that the name of the user is Mary, the post, which is a list, the title of the only one that we have here is learn GraphQL today. And the followers, which is specified in the request is return the last three, 
followers and the names of these followers, not the ID. So you can see that this method of querying allow us to control what we want to see on each level. So using GraphQL, the client can specify exactly the data it needs in a query. So notice that the structure of the, of the server response follow precisely the nested structure defined in the query. So this offers us like uh, control over what would like to see. So what are the other advanta advantages of GraphQL over REST? Number one on this list, or like I would say number two, is that it uh, reduces or like it eliminates over, over or under fetching of data. So what this means is like, I, or like what this addresses is a common problem with REST, wherein like a client's only way of obtaining data from the server is by eating uh, the endpoint and getting a fixed data structure that may or may not be needed as a whole, like at that particular time. So with GraphQL, you can, uh, a client can specify the needed data that they want from the server without overwhelming with um, a lot of uh, data. So it also offers more in-depth analytics. So what this means is that like insightful analytics on the back end is possible. With GraphQL, the, it's, GraphQL allows you to have a more detailed and more robust insight about um, data that has been requested on the back end. Okay, this is because each client, or each device specifies exactly what information it needs. So with with this and how uh, data is made available and how it's used, like it can be easily accessed. What, what that means is that based on how users request this data and how they interact with it, insights can be quickly drawn from how important these data are and which data are actually more um, needed by the client. So, but GraphQL as well has its own problems. So example is um, caching, or caching rather. So because GraphQL has only one endpoint, whereas with, um, so whereas with REST API, there are multiple endpoints for different requests. So it's easier for the browser to make, to cache down information that remains the same with each request as well. So um, caching and GraphQL is extremely difficult as it, as it stands now. So another problem with GraphQL is problem with arbitrary requests. So what this, mean, what this means is that um, this, act, this will actually affect more of uh, open APIs wherein, uh, wherein there is uh, no proper authentication or authorization as to which client has access to certain information. So uh, with the graph method of um or with a graph way of relating data available in the database together it is easy for uh, non-intended data to be accessed via request so these are the problems that i i have seen with um these are the problems i think stands with uh, GraphQL at the moment. So if you uh, have any other, or you feel like there are other advantages you could, you know, you've, you've noticed with GraphQL, you can also list them in the comment section and let's discuss them. So which of these is best for my application, the GraphQL or the REST uh, approach? So 
What I would say is that GraphQL APIs is an interesting approach. However, it is important to understand the trade-off before making such architectural decisions. Some APIs, such as those with few entities and relationships across uh, entities like Analytics API, may not be suit, uh, suited for GraphQL. Whereas applications with many different domains like e-commerce applications, where you have items, users, orders, payments, tracking, and all of this, and so may be able to leverage GraphQL much more. So with this video, I believe I communicated one or two things regarding uh, GraphQL and REST APIs, and I hope I impacted something. Like I impacted knowledge or added more a bit or, or confirmed some things. So if you found value in this video, you can like, click the like button and you can as well subscribe to the channel. So in the next video, I'll be creating, I'll be creating a, an application wherein we will be putting to use both REST APIs and graph AQ, the GraphQL approach. So I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.